It's a high school basketball game that happened back on February 10th earlier this year. Class 4A matchup between Elgin and Cash. You're looking at footage provided to us. At the inbound pass that hits another player in the face, and that is the issue we're talking about today. I'm joined now by Jenny Carlson and Jacob Unruh from the Oklahoma Sports Desk. Um, and there are various angles to this. What started as a basketball play now becomes a little bit uh, more of a heavier situation. Jacob, give us the overview of the story you're working on. Uh, basically, you know, eight months ago on February 10th, this happened where a it is uh, believed by Gentry Holt's father, Gary, that cash coach Kenny White orchestrated weeks in advance a play designed to throw the ball at his daughter's face on inbounds and break her nose. Um, the play happened late in the game. Uh, it took a couple times to execute according to video evidence that we've seen. Um, and it's, it's been an eight month investigation by this father to bring all this to light and to say, hey, this was wrong. His three game suspension on Kenny White from Cash Public Schools was not enough and we want more. Um, and that's where we're at, and he came, they came to us with this story. Again, the game happened on February 10th. We were approached with this story earlier in the summer. It's something we've been investigating and looking into. You see the inbound play. Initially, it's a ball off the player. They, they reset. Mm -hmm. And on the second time, there are, there are various angles to this uh, from a player pointing to perhaps signaling this play on the inbounds and then getting tagged in the face. Jenny? Yeah, it, yeah definitely so. You know, and. You know, you can't know for certain, I guess, what happened unless you were in that huddle. Well, two of the players who were in that huddle have signed affidavits uh, after uh, this process went along. I think, as Jacob mentioned, you know, eight months, and, and you also mentioned we heard about this in the summer. But I think Gary Holt attempted to have this process go through sort of what he saw as the proper channels, go through Cash Public Schools, ask them to look into it, which they have. Um, there's some differing accounts of what they were told. Um, some have said that uh, the players have said they were told to lie about this incident being uh, uh, talked about beforehand. Uh, others have said they said I, the coach uh, instigated this, we, we talked about it in practice, then we did it in the game, it was something that was planned. So again, Cash saying they had done an investigation uh, and that they didn't find any wrongdoing. So you have sort of going through that channel, then the OSSAA is called into the fray. They basically take the cash investigation and say, you know, we, we see the investigation, we see the punishment, we're going to let that stand. But as Gary Holt continued to look at it, continued to uh, do his own uh, investigation through open records, through interviews, he just felt like that the punishment did not commit what he felt like was a very premeditated situation by a coach who is supposed to be an extension of the classroom and in a public schools, uh, high school setting, is a teacher. And, and here he was apparently, according to these affidavits, telling his players, uh, we're going to throw a pass in her face and try to break her nose. Let's go through the cast of characters here. Let's start with the player Gentry Holt. She is now playing at Oklahoma State, correct? Yes, she's a very good basketball player. She's a 6'3 forward for Elgin at the time. She might play more of a wing in Oklahoma State, um, but she's, she led into the last two state tournaments. Um, they ended up beating Cash to get in the state tournament later that season. Um, but she's, she's a very good ball player that, uh, as, as essentially, what's interesting is she's moved on, but her dad hasn't. And let's talk about the dad. That's Gary Holt, and, and why hasn't he moved on? I mean, he, he, like I said, we, he doesn't feel the punishment was enough. He's, th he's saying the OSSAA has looked the other way, Cash's punishment uh, doesn't fit the crime, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, right, right. And, and, and he feels like, too, you know, she, she wasn't injured severely, but she could have been. Mm -hmm. And it's his daughter, only, only child. You know, he, I think he wants to go to bat and just make sure that this doesn't happen again to somebody else. Well, and I think, too, there's uh, the situation of these players that have already given affidavits who've said that they would testify to what is in those affidavits in a court of law if called upon. And according to them, the coach who served a three-game suspension, uh, Kenny White, told the players that he was being suspended because of their actions, and it was because of what they did that he was being suspended. And so there's a sense from some of these players like they were being put out there as being wronged uh, or, or as being the, the, the ones who did this and it, they were wrong for it. And they're saying, now wait, again, this is from the affidavits. They're saying that's not what happened. He was the one 
who orchestrated and instigated this. Let's talk a little bit more, Jacob, about Kenny White. He's the coach there at Cash, and you've spoken with him. Yes, um, I, he, he declined comment today on the record, but I've known I've known Kenny for a while now. Successful I went, coach. He's a successful coach. He was at Cash. Bef uh, this is his second time. Uh, he was the first time he was at Cash. They went to the state tournament four straight years. Um, they had Taylor Thompson, who played at Fresno State at the time, who is now an assistant coach at Elgin, um, ironically. And um, he uh, went to Tipton for a little while, and now he's back as the coach. This is, I believe, his second or third season back with Cash. Um, he's highly regarded around there. Um, he's, a, he's a very um, talented coach. and he's, he's done a lot for that program, and I think that's part of Cash's thoughts on this, too. Well, and I think, too, it, it should probably be pointed out as we sit here in Oklahoma City uh, that Cash and Elgin are both in Comanche County, which is down by Lawton. Very similar communities, both in the 2,500 mm -hmm. to 3,000 population size. Again, 4A schools, I think, as we mentioned before. Um, about 20 minutes from Lawton and with Fort Sill, you've got a lot of people mm -hmm. um, that live in those outlying communities. So in a lot, in a lot of ways, very similar families, situations, communities that find themselves playing against each other a lot. They played against each other five times last season, uh, two regular season, one county tournament, and twice in the playoffs. So these teams see each other a lot. The rivalry is huge. Um, so Gentry Holt is well known in, uh, in cash and vice versa. Players on both sides, coaches on both sides, a big rivalry there. Final question for you guys, what happens next? <laughs> well, I'm not sure we know for sure. Um, it, from all accounts, from the way that this has played out to this point, my suspicion is that Gary Holt and his now uh, uh, representation uh, on the legal side would like to see this uh, not have to go to court. Um, the way Gary Holt has done it in trying to get cash to address it and trying to get the OSSAA to address it, um, I think he would like to see it resolved without going to court but at the same time he has a strong sense when he met with us he has a strong sense of wanting uh, these teachers these public servants to be held accountable and uh, he holds them to a high standard as he thinks all parents of children should and so I think he really wants to make sure that all kids whether in the cash school system or another school system that might play against one of these teams are protected and I think he sees this as a way to try to protect kids um, that might be uh, might be impacted by a, a teacher coach that he doesn't think very highly of after all this investigating. All right very good Jenny Carlson, Jacob Unruh, thanks for your time and your coverage. And more coverage can be found in the Oklahoman and online at newsok.com.